Hey coach, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content. At this point, we've pretty much got content going out every 24 to 48 hours. So don't stay stuck with your business. And if you need more help, reach out to me below this video. Number of ways you can do that. You can either apply for our accelerator program or you can jump on a 15 to 20 minute call with me where we can talk about your business. Now, today I want to touch on something that I've been getting asked on a regular basis. A lot of coaches reach out to me via WhatsApp, via email, and they ask me about starting a private soccer club, right? So private soccer slash football club. So wanted to make this very short video to kind of give you a eight step process in which you can build your own private soccer club. Now, this is something I did myself. So run away with it, implement it. And if you need more help, we have a number of ways we can help you to get to the next level. But essentially, this comes down to the first point which I'm going to make here, which is opening a training academy business first. So most of the coaches that we work with that go on to open, open soccer clubs or basketball clubs or clubs in their sport, which have teams that play in local leagues, all of them start off by opening a coaching business or a training academy. Now, why is that important? It's important because you can't just simply open a, a club, right? I mean, you could, but opening a training academy, number one, it gives you that experience of opening a, a training environment for kids, right? So once you open a training academy, then you can start to build your academy to the point where getting taking the business to the next level is what I'm going to talk about in the second point. So the first one, if you want to open a private soccer club, something we would recommend is first look to open a training academy where you're working with players of different abilities, different ages, uh, male, female, Right. So that way your training academy can start to get exposure and people start to like trust your training. Now, the next one is grow your academy until there is a demand for club. So something we speak to coaches about is once your academy gets to a point where you have 100, 200 kids. Now you can have a look to see, right, is there demand for teams? Is there demand for parents to be traveling every every weekend to go and play in different places against different teams? Okay, one thing is bringing your child to the same place every week for just training. Another commitment is committing to a local league where you might have to travel one or two hours for just a game. Okay, so first of all, you have to see whether there is demand for it. OK, now the third one kind of touches on the second point, but the third one is create a survey by asking parents if they would join your club. So something I did is once I, I got to a point where I knew there was demand because a lot of parents were asking me about it. Players were asking me about it. I sat down and I put together a survey, which I later on uh, sent out to parents. And based on the feedback I got, if there was a majority that said, right, yes, we would be committed to joining your club, then the next bit we did, which is number four, we ran tryouts. So one day, one day during the week before, well, once all the once all the teams, all the leagues finished training, we then held a tryout session where we had different age groups at different hours come and try out to try to put together teams. Now we managed to put together several teams for the club. Okay. And that goes on to the next point, which is once you have teams, once you have parents committed, right? The next bit is you've got to try and now look for coaches to run your teams. Okay. You are one person, so you're not going to be able to be 
everywhere every weekend when your teams are playing in different places. So you're, you're going to need to hire assistant coaches to be able to run your teams to be able to do that. So the next one was hire, hire coaches to run your club teams. Now, the sixth one is before the start of the season, make sure that you register your teams into local leagues. Okay, so once your tryouts are done, once you've got demand, the next bit is right. Now, can we then look at hiring out? So hiring out coaches and then looking to register them in to a local league. Something I would recommend, though, before you do anything else and before you run a tryout is look at the local leagues in your area and what are the requirements for them to join. In my area, there were some leagues that you had to have minimum three teams in order to join. Some leagues, which are private leagues, they might say, right, you're okay with only one team. So each league in your area will, will have their own requirements for you to join, but just make sure that you do your research and you read up on what are the terms and conditions for each league and what are the requirements for players in order to register onto them. Okay, so the seventh one is now structure a payment system, membership type of model. So the way I did it was our league ran from September through to May. So essentially that was about seven months or so, six, seven months, because there we did it, we did have a break in between for, for Christmas. So I think it worked out to about about seven months. So what I did is I had a subscription, which was a monthly subscription every month to join, uh, to come to the, for the training. And that essentially paid for all the weekly training sessions. And then there was an upfront registration fee to, to that essentially was to register for the league. So parents made two payments. The first one at the start of the season, which was a bigger type of payment, but that was towards the league and the league fees. And then it was a month to month as direct debit, which would come out every single month. And that would cover the cost for training. It would cover the cost for facility rentals. It would cover the cost for the coaches. Okay. And then the eighth one is now add extra training services to your teams. Okay. So once you have a, a number of teams in your, in your private soccer club, now what you can do is you can run holiday camps. You can offer one-to-one -one training for them. And you can essentially do what you what you were doing with your training academy. You can offer that as an extra on top of your team training. So if any parents want to hire one of your coaches or want extra one-on-one -on -one training, you can add that as an extra service. If there's holiday holidays coming up where, for example, Easter, Christmas, you could run holiday camps for all your teams where parents can register. They bring their kid. Could be a half day. It could be a full day camp, right? You can run clinics. So these might be position specific clinics. You might run goalkeeper clinics for all the goalkeepers at your club. You might run defender clinics for all the defenders at your club, striking clinics, right? There's a number of different things. You might decide to do workshops, uh, tours taking your teams to different countries uh, or different cities across the country you're in to play in tournaments right there's so many things that you can do as an extra bonus uh, and add it on as an extra service to your soccer club okay so thank you for watching and if you have any questions number of ways you can reach out to me visit the description below and we can uh, speak over a Zoom call, or if you want to learn more about our Sports Accelerator program, you can do that by applying uh, through the through the link in my description below. It takes you to a landing page. You'll be able to see all the results with the coaches that we've worked with who have built training academies. And if you want to take the next step and apply for it, then you can do that through the link 
in there. Hey, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.